Hornet has recently announced the Analog Stage MK2 and it looks very promising and it's something that I definitely want to take a look at today. So let's get started! So the Hornet Analog Stage MK2 is not a analog stage piano, no, it's an analog stage, it's an analog audio stage and it is there to add analog vibe to your digital mixes and this makes a lot of sense. This plugin is the reason why people invest in things like summing mixers and stuff. And what is really cool is that, well, the king of audio, Dan Worrell, made a video about summing mixers. I will link it over here, uh, basically debunking the whole summing part of a summing mixer. Because a summing mixer basically is about color. And honestly, creating color in your DAW or with an analog box is always cheaper than using a summing mixer. Because if you use a summing mixer, you don't only have to invest in the summing mixer, but also in DA converters. And, you know, buying high class DA converters is pretty expensive. Having a plugin for 20 euros that can basically have the same effect or can even be more advanced can be a way better option. And I'm not trying to sell this thing here because we first want to see because they are promising. They are promising a lot of things. It's a console emulation plugin that recreates those sound characteristics usually associated with analog gear and can be used to bring your mix some analog console flavor if used on every channel or bus. That's also how I would use it in fact. I would really use this as like the preamp on a normal console. So, so I would put it first in my signal chain and then uh, put the rest of my, well not plugins, analog gear on it. I actually use so much analog gear that I don't really need this thing. Um, so they're doing a lot of things and I really want to look at the plugin in fact. The only thing that I want to say is that the analog stage provides intelligent oversampling up to four times to guarantee the highest possible sound quality and an internal processing sample rate of 192 kilohertz. I mean we're talking about distortion here and distortion needs oversampling. Distortion in the box needs oversampling. I'm gonna make a t-shirt. Distortion needs oversampling. I don't, I don't know yet. I don't know yet about t-shirts. So let's take a look at the UI, let's take a look at the plugin. We've got, um, I think, input-output gain here, which is linked, which is great. I mean, um, I don't have to do this uh, with, with my hands. Uh, we've got a mic uh, plus 20 dB input. I hope it doesn't add phantom power to the mix because that can damage some vintage equipment. I don't think it will. We've got an auto mode which I'm not intelligent enough right now to understand. We've got VU, uh, I think this is VU calibration or something. Three VU, why can't I put this to four VU? I don't know. So this is kind of cool. We can choose the different, uh, different types of, well, I think analog design. So op amp, transistor and tube, and we can say how old it is, which is interesting. I didn't know that op amps had degradation. Maybe discrete op amps will have because transistors basically have some degradation. Tubes do have degradation, definitely. So we've got filtering here. We've got his. Why is this on? Why? Why was this thing on by default? Why is his on by default? <laughs> thing is, it's minus one hundred dB, but stack this on like thirty channels, and it's a lot more. Got a low pass, high pass, all cool. Let's take a look at it, this thing. Let's run some audio through it. And of course, for the audio, we're going to use a track from Radiute Stormsand. So, so honestly, op amps, like the default setting here, op amps don't like to be distorted. They sound really harsh when you get them into distortion. Isn't it like that they have a power supply of plus and minus 18 volts or something? 
you really gotta work hard to get that thing into distortion. Transistors and tubes are way better for it. Let's overdrive this thing. Let's see what happens when a transistor gets old. Not a lot, actually. Is that just the transistor getting old or also the capacitors getting old? Because it seems like losing some low frequencies. I don't know. Tube is the one that is like the most interesting. Uh, also, because um, imagine that you can put this on every channel. There isn't really a large format tube console. Like it doesn't exist because physics, microphonics, I don't know. There, there are some tube consoles, of course, but they are pretty, pretty small, actually. So imagine that you can now put tube distortion on all of your channels. I mean... So, I mean, 30-year-old used tubes, I mean... try making two mixes so one without and one with the plug-in on every single channel and then listen to the differences so on the drums i want to do tube and i want to drive it pretty pretty hard maybe with all the tubes, like this. Okay, and then on the bass. The tube is also very cool on bass, I think. Uh, yeah, let's do tube on bass as well. And make it, make it a lot older as well. We do need the low end, of course, so. Let's do fresh tubes. Something like this, okay. What else do we have? I'm working out of groups here, so I can't really do it on a full mix, but let's see what, what difference we can make on these small groups. Okay, I wanna do transistor on here, on like the melodies. Kind of weird because I, I just want to do tube on everything. I, I just I just love tubes. Like like a triode tube by default is very musical. So that's that's why I like tube so much. <laughs> Let's not do too much here. Create the analog vibe. I mean, <laughs> and I'm overdoing it. And there's a lot to tweak, which is also cool. Like there's more to tweak than you can normally tweak on on, on like a console, but it creates that analog vibe for like 20 euros. What else do I need to say? Well, what I do need to say is that you can test it out yourself by downloading the demo. So I'll link to Analog Stage in the description down below. Go ahead, download the demo, test it out yourself and come back to me and tell me uh, if you agree with me or not. I mean, it's all fine. For the disclosure, Hornet did send me an email that they released Analog Stage and they also sent me an NFR license so that I could check it out on video uh, and I didn't need to run the demo. So huge thanks to Hornet for that. However, 
Hornet is not getting access to the video before the rest of the world. They're not allowed to influence anything that I'm saying in this video. And I do have a feeling that I can say anything I want and that I am pretty independent. And if you appreciate my independence, make sure to support me. You can do it by using my affiliate links. I'll link them over here. So Toman over here and Sweetwater over here. <laughs> Don't swap them and otherwise scan them both. And then you will find out which shop is which. If you use my affiliate link when buying something, you are supporting me and you're also getting your gear and you're not paying anything extra. So that's really cool, right? Another way to support the channel is by becoming a member. You can do that on YouTube and you can do that on Patreon. Uh, both have the same content on it. Uh, and I'm starting to produce some exclusive content as well. And we've got an exclusive series coming near the end of this year. Last way to support the whole YouTube platform is by staying on it and watching more videos. So I'll link one of my videos over here. But feel free to watch uh, videos from other creators. Thanks a lot for watching. Keep pushing and bye bye.